Hey guys, I'm Jesse, and today we're going to talk about The Lord of the Rings while I make some Gandalf fan art. For the sake of time, I'll just say now that any stock images I used will be linked in the description. Cool? Good. Now let's get to the fun stuff. Warning, the following video contains spoilers. First off, I loved reading Lord of the Rings, but, I mean, who hasn't? However, one thing has bugged fans of the story since, well, I guess since it came out. You probably already know what it is. Why didn't they just fly those damn giant eagles to Mount Doom and toss the ring to its fiery demise? Well, get ready to have your mind blown. Gandalf actually was going to fly the eagles to Mount Doom. What? I know, but Vulcan Deathgrip wrote this fan theory on Reddit detailing on how Gandalf was completely planning to ask his eagle friends to just fly everyone on over to Mount Doom and destroy the ring. But then he got sidetracked. Sidetracked? They're on a mission to destroy the One Ring. How? Well, according to Vulcan Death Grip's theory, Gandalf goes to Saruman for help after he realizes Frodo's ring is the One Ring. But Saruman reveals that he's now on Sauron's side, and when Gandalf refuses to join him, he imprisons Gandalf on top of a tower. Well, as you know, Gandalf catches a moth and releases it with a message for help, which comes just in time in the form of the giant eagles, right as Saruman is beating the crap out of Gandalf and giving him the ultimatum of joining him, or dying. Embrace the power of the ring, or embrace your own destruction. <laughs> as we know, Gandalf's not an idiot. And as he was soaring on the back of this giant majestic freaking eagle, the thought probably crossed his mind, hey, you know, I bet they could help out with this ring situation. So he doesn't go directly to Rivendell to meet back up with the hobbits. He instead goes first to where the eagles live, about here, in the northern parts of the Misty Mountains on the eastern slopes, which we know from The Hobbit. Here, Gandalf and the eagles discuss the plan for the eagles to take Frodo in the ring to Mordor and the eagles agree. They realize that the only defense against the eagles would be the dragons of the Nazgul ride. But the eagles have the element of surprise and much greater numbers if they wound up needing to fight off the dragons. Flying is really their only advantage here. So they also agree that the plan should be kept secret, because if Sauron found out about it, he'd realize the one weakness in his defenses and quickly patch it up. Obviously, they have a lot riding on this plan, so when Gandalf does get back to Rivendell, he tells no one. If someone were captured along the way, they could have the plan tortured out of them, and then the plan would be ruined. Gandalf just has to get the Fellowship to the other side of the Misty Mountains and go north to where the eagles live to meet them. If he met them anywhere else, the enemy would be more likely to spot them in discovering the plan, which can't happen because for all Gandalf knows, the fate of Middle-earth is resting on this plan succeeding. Now there are four main routes to get across the Misty Mountains. High Pass, Redhorn Pass, Moria, and the Gap of Rohan. High Pass would have been ideal as it was closest to the Eagles, but he knew that Saruman would be watching it, so that was a no-go. Redhorn Pass was the next best option. Yeah, it was dangerous and meant a longer journey north to meet the eagles, but it stood the safest bet at keeping the plan a secret, and that was the most important to Gandalf right now. But Saruman was watching there too and sent storms to stop them. The Gap of Rohan would not only take the Fellowship too close to Isengard, but it would also take them too far south and thus too far to travel back up to the eagles. That leaves Moria. It's clear Gandalf isn't fond of this route, for one, he knows the dwarves awakened the Balrog when they got greedy and mined too far, but it's also risky because goblins or orcs could also catch them heading north. It's also going to take them a lot further south than he'd like to go, but really, what else is he going to do? It's the last real option left. So they go through Moria and almost get through, but you know what happens next. Well, he was right, the Balrog didn't pass, however, it managed to take Gandalf with him. Exasperated and on the verge of falling to his death, Gandalf realizes he needs to tell the others the eagle plan quickly before he falls to his death, but he needs to do so in a way that any nearby orcs or goblins won't understand. You remember the line. Fly, you fools! He says this hoping that at least one of the Fellowship will understand the message and carry out the plan they knew nothing about. But they don't, understandably. Gandalf falls and fights the Balrog, and the others escape Mordor to carry out the only plan they knew about. Get the Ring to Mordor. 
As we all know, Gandalf dies after defeating the Balrog and comes back as Gandalf the White. However, when he comes back, he's forgotten a lot about his previous life, only remembering he was even called Gandalf when Aragorn calls him by name. So it's not inconceivable that he had forgotten his entire plan with the Eagles as well. It isn't until the end when he needs to get Frodo and Sam away from the erupting Mount Doom and calls upon the Eagles to fly them out of there when he remembers the plan. You see, calling the Eagles reminds him of the plan in the same way that Aragorn calling him Gandalf reminded him of his name. But by this time, the ring is destroyed and the plan is redundant. Mind blown. I mean, this is a really well thought out theory, and everything just fits so well that I think this could very nearly be true. However, since this theory came out, a lot of other Tolkien fans have come out with reasons why this theory holds no merit. The biggest and simplest argument I've seen against it are the Eagles themselves. The argument is that the Eagles think they are above most other races and could care less about what happens to them. They see no reason to help out, not wanting to get involved in a war that seemingly doesn't involve them. They only come to intervene in Return of the King because they realize Sauron means business, and then only helping Gandalf again because they hold a soft spot for him because he healed their leader's arrow wound back in the day. Both sides make pretty good points, but... What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Before I end this video, I'd like to feature some art. Check out this piece by artist Rosin Semeninov from Bulgaria. To see more of his work, check out his links in the description. Also, if you'd like a chance for your art to be featured in a future video, I'm currently accepting submissions over on DeviantArt. All my links are down below. Alright, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video, or at least found it interesting. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye!